as I understand it, 92% of all sales outside the USA are built in Ireland. Is that right? I'm not sure it's 92%, but uh, the vast majority of sales outside the US will be built in Google in Ireland. That's correct. Why? Well, I mean, first, let me say we pay the tax we're required to pay in every country in which we operate, well, including the UK. It depends um, where you choose to, to put the business, doesn't it? Depends where you choose to put the business. So, um, this is what all this afternoon is about. It depends where absolutely. you choose to put the business. So perhaps, given that we're not talking here about a business that makes money from its consumers, but that makes money from business to business advertising, if I can just uh, very quickly uh, talk about how Google is set up. Um, I think uh, we've, uh, well, let me, uh, let me try to do answer that to avoid the questions, actually. No, certainly not. Um, it seems <coughs> to me that you've got, we have Google UK, who acts as an agent to Google Ireland Limited, if you look at my little picture. I, ca I can't really see your drawing. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but it's about that. <laughs> let me just, you, Google UK as, acts as an agent for Google Ireland Limited, where you tax in Ireland yep. is 12.5% corporation yep. tax. So when, when Google became popular outside the US... Is that right? Am I correct? I'll try and answer your first question first. So when Google became popular outside the US, we set up in Ireland to serve the whole of the European Union under a uh, single European market. And we chose, we chose Ireland for a range of reasons, one being it has a competitive rate of corporation tax, we pay 12.5% there. Other reasons including the presence of a skilled labour force in technology, so Microsoft and Oracle and others were there, and also the property and other costs for our staff are lower than they are in, for example, central London. So Ireland is the base of our operations for Europe, it has data centres and we've invested tens of millions of euros uh, in, in space and equipment and people in, in Ireland. And everybody who buys advertising from Google, because that's how we make our money, buys advertising from Google in Ireland. Just in the same way as any company can set up to okay, trade within but Europe. My understanding is that, Go I understand that, and thank you for that clear answer. Google Ireland Limited, though, pays a fee to this Google Netherlands holding BV. Yeah, so shall I talk about Google UK, which was your second question, and then I can come on to the rest of it. So in, in the UK, uh, Google has a, a business, Google Limited. Um, it had a, a revenue last year of £396 million, pounds, and we paid corporation tax of £6 million pounds on, that, uh, on that business. It made an accounting profit of £31 million. Pounds. So we pay corporation tax in the UK, and over the last three years that business has grown significantly as we're a you know, relatively young business uh, as we've grown. So what the people in the UK do uh, is provide services that are charged to uh, Google Island, and those services are principally around um, promoting our products, making sure that they work in the UK for UK consumers. And what's different about Google versus the other businesses you've been talking about, we're not selling books and we're not uh, making You're coffee. Advertising we're, we're, well, the services we provide to consumers are based on the computer science uh, which drives search and all of other technology like Google Maps and so on. And that's all done in California. Uh, very clearly, um, innovations that have never been seen before in the world in terms of computer science that allows you to search the internet. Adverts are UK specific search engine, aren't they? So, yeah, in terms of if you're a consumer, if I can explain briefly how the thing works, if you're a consumer in the UK, imagine you're a mother in Merseyside looking for a birthday present for a daughter. You search for uh, cool bags on Google UK site. It's a UK site in that the content uh, sort of uh, you see is more focused on the UK than it would be if you were focusing searching on the global site. Right? So you might find an advertisement in there, one of the blue links that says ads from the Cambridge Satchel Company, and that would be one of our customers. And that customer would only pay if you were to click on the link and go through to the site uh, that is trying to sell you uh, Satchel in this case. And what that allows people to do uh, on the business side is to target people who are searching on google.co.uk or Google France or Google uh, US or any other geography against particular words. And the advertiser only pays when a consumer clicks on what they've chosen to do. So one of the reasons for operating out in Ireland is many of our customers in the UK want to reach uh, consumers all around the world. And in Ireland, we have over 3,000 people speaking 50 different languages, helping businesses in Europe connect with consumers in Europe and across the world. And that's why we're organized in that way. But the ad you will see, I think it's a very important point, because it's back to trying to mm -hmm. see the economic activity in, in, in the UK. The ad that you see in the UK is different. I mean, if I can pursue my think, well, let's ask this question first. Is different from the ad you'd see in the Netherlands? Um, 
if you were the Cambridge Cat Satchel company s- sort of selling satchels and you'd chosen to target somebody typing satchels in yeah, the Netherlands, you would see an ad for yeah, that satchels but, in oh, the Netherlands. But you, you, you sell UK specific advertising space which will be seen by all of us. Yeah, it's possible for any, any company anywhere in the world to uh, advertise to a UK uh, user of Google. But you it's sell, possible. and so you have people in the UK selling your advertising space. You? We, we have um, anybody who buys advertising from us in Europe buys from Google in Ireland from our experts. No, where, are, you, with the where are they based? They go door to door knocking, finding. You well, know, presumably there's a marketing sales team that go around trying to sell the advertising. Where are they based? In the Ireland? It's an internet-based business, so most of our customers trans- transact online or, or through the telephone with experts in Ireland. We do have people in the UK. We have. Uh, for the accounting year I mentioned, the last year which we filed, uh, we had 1,300 people in the UK, and it's now up to about 1,500 people. sell advertising space in the UK? And what they do is they, they do a range of things, promoting our products. Uh, some of them do work with businesses, because businesses you know, want to be educated by Google about uh, the internet and its opportunities. Businesses can use a range of things from Google, including free tools. Google Analytics is one that helps you understand how your website works if they want to buy advertising from us and they're encouraged to do so by our people in the UK they'll buy it from our expert team okay, in can Dublin. you answer this rather so out of your 1200 people you said you had in the UK there's 1300, 1300. Uh, last year how many are sales how much, how much of that is salesforce marketing no, nobody's uh, selling they're all promoting the products uh, but they're definitely encouraging people to spend money how many on Google. Of, well they nobody's, must, who's nobody's selling buying to, from them who's selling into the UK market who is selling who's doing the selling the, uh, who's trying well, to encourage people to advertise on your search uh, there are people yeah absolutely there are people in the UK who Doing that. How many? Um, of the 1,300 last year, I think about 700 were what we would call kind of marketing and digital consultancy people, and some of those, only some of those, would be. And how many with are selling from Ireland into the UK? Uh, we've how got three, we've got 3,000 uh, people in Ireland. They do. How a range many of are selling things. from Ireland into the into UK? Into the UK, there would be uh, a couple of hundred. So 700 in the UK, a couple of hundred in Ireland. But, Madam uh, Chairman, the 700 in the UK include people who do things like make all the consumer products work, so maps and everything else, which has to work in the UK market. So so there is economic activity in the UK. But the the bigger thing here is that all the technology uh, which creates the economic value, all of the innovation which powers Google search comes out of California. This we is have your loyalty stuff. I will come no, it's to not that. loyalty. I'm trying to get. I'm trying okay. to get where the economic activity. Yeah, is. Yeah, I'm just so trying to explain you that. Very, you very helpfully told but us the there's about 700 people who sort of sell into the UK, marketing people, as compared to 200 in Ireland. What I, I then just, don't okay. understand okay. is the okay. Irish, Irish guys pay a fee to Google Netherlands Holding BV. Is that to save withholding tax? Uh, there was an arrangement in place to do that. I understand it's no longer necessary. So, uh, but was it set in place to save withholding tax? That's my, that's my understanding. It was. Thank you. That's a very direct answer. That's the Thank first you. one we've had today. Thank you. But it's no longer necessary. It therefore goes to Google Holdings Ireland, that's which correct. is registered in Ireland but administered from Bermuda. That's correct. So, if that happens, your profits actually go to Bermuda? How much, you, how much, how much is sitting in Bermuda? I don't know the number, but it's true that um, Bermuda is a part of our operations, and the reason for that is, as an international company, when you set up operations outside uh, your domestic uh, market, which in our case is the US, uh, you look for where to locate your operations, and as I explained, we chose to, uh, within the European Union, we chose, chose to locate in Ireland, uh, for the reasons I've explained. But also, uh, you need to protect your intellectual property and set up operations in, in countries around the world in order to do that. And we have an operation, uh, or an entity set up in, uh, okay. in Bermuda to do but that. What I appreciate is that you have actually openly told us that you've chosen both Ireland and then Bermuda because they are both. Uh, yeah, and I think that's tax, right. As a multinational. Tax, uh, exactly, if, no, if not, no tax. But as a multinational what then, company, you I've have got a duty. To come back to what really gets the UK ordinary punter out there who uses Google day in, day out, is that uh, they contribute towards your business. There's economic activity because I use Google, all of us around the table use Google. Um, uh, They contribute to your profits and they see no proper, fair contribution from you to corporation tax. And that's okay. the bugging, so, that's the thing that bugs us all. I, I understand, but I think it's a misunderstanding uh, of the concern, in that we pay corporation tax here well, on, the, ac- on the activity, time but time if, may I try to uh, sort of answer? Uh, we pay corporation tax here on the activity our people here do. 
But if you think about Google, it is technology. 17,000 engineers in California build and continue to invest in developing the technology. That is what creates the economic uh, value uh, for what Google. What does Bermuda create? Let me explain. Yeah. That what, what creates the economic value for Google is the technology and the computer science. Hopefully people understand that because you know, it's pretty magical to be able to search the entire web in seconds and get answers fast. And that's what we continue to invest in. So what does Bermuda create? So let me just explain. So that's how we create the economic value. And tax law suggests that the uh, you know that uh, you need to um, pay tax where the economic value is created. We believe that's there. Um, in the case of the UK, the economic activity that happens in the UK, which is about helping people to understand how to use the internet and products and services, we've um, looked at how best to uh, you know establish what we should pay for the services that are provided by people in the UK. The way we come to a conclusion on that is we look at if we went outside and hired other firms to do those kind of things, what would we pay there? And that's how we've set up what the cost structure. What's to create? In Bermuda, we have a, a, an entity that holds the rights to our intellectual property, and you can tell it's a very I, intellectual property. But I thought property you just told us the intellectual business. property is all in California. Uh, I was trying to finish the sentence, which is the intellectual property rights for outside uh, of the US for the license. But they're not of those doing properties. the R and D; it's all in California. But that's right. But we, um, like any company, we're required to do two things: uh, one, to play by the rules, and when you set up internationally, you need to make decisions about how to protect your intellectual property and how to organise. And secondly, to manage our costs efficiently in order to satisfy our shareholders. And our goal so as a company you're is minimizing to minimising your tax, even though it's unfair to British taxpayers. Um, it's not unfair to British taxpayers. We pay all the tax you require us to pay in the UK. We paid six million yeah, maybe of tax last year. We're not year. accusing you of being illegal. We're accusing you of being immoral. I think it's a matter. It's not a matter of personal choice. In terms of your US filings, do you check what's referred to as check the box? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of In terms of your US filings, do you, in what, what tax accountants refer to as check the box? I'm afraid I'm not a tax accountant. My job is to run the business in but Europe. But it goes to the heart yeah, of so how passive income is dealt with, doesn't it? Because I'm, I'm not the Bermuda the operation is dealing with your intellectual property rights outside the US. Mm -hmm. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. And there's, as you also said, this is a US company. Google Incorporated is a US company, that's uh, And there are, uh, and like you, I am not uh, far from it, an expert in uh, tax affairs, but as I understand it, there are rules in the US in terms of the treatment of income earned by a US group outside the US, are there not? I, I'm sure there are. I'm not an expert. I focus on the UK and Europe. Yeah. There's, there's well, it rather goes, again, a, a bit like with Mr Cecil, to the heart of the issue, because what we have is if I'm understanding correctly, uh, a choice of location in Ireland because that's got a low corporation rate and there's a debate which the Chair has been alluding as to what extent the business has been done in Ireland and, and to what extent it's been done in the UK. But there's then the more interesting question, which is what happens to the money from Ireland? Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, that's going to Bermuda. And the question in my mind is why is that not being captured from a US tax mm -hmm. perspective? And the phrase that was suggested to me is there's a way in terms of US filings that one can get around this, which is referred to as check the box, hence my question. So, as I say, I'm not familiar with the phrase that you mentioned. What I can assure the committee is the tax that we pay in the UK and how we operate in Europe has nothing to do with you know, those arrangements outside. The tax we pay in the UK is a function of the activity that people do in the UK. Perhaps the and scene. that is in line with UK sure. law. And the way we operate around the world is in line with the law in every jurisdiction. No, no, no one's suggesting operate. you don't operate in there. I mean, the CNAG has expertise in this, so he may want to come in. Um, Amos, sorry. Yes, Amos. I just wanted to say, forgive me, thank you. I only just wanted to say, um, I have some familiarity with Bermuda myself. And it's primarily, I know it's, uh, I'm sure it's a good place to protect intellectual property rights, but I mean the primary reason people locate companies in Bermuda is because it's a low tax area, that's right, isn't it? And so what you're doing is rolling up uh, royalties in Bermuda in a protected tax zone. Now, I don't, that's not illegal, but the fact is, so now if I compare this, so the discussion we had with Starbucks was that so they said they, in their tax policies they don't use uh, they don't use uh, offshore tax havens, but you do. That's part of your. That is part of your strategy. And uh, I'm just pointing out that it's somewhat different. You don't. That's fine. So you're rolling up money in Bermuda, 
Do you remit that by, by dividend to the UK or just piling it up in Bermuda? No, uh, the tax we pay in the UK is a function of the activity we do in the UK and our accounts are, are published. I know, but I'm the asking about pay, Bermuda. Yeah, absolutely. The, all I can say is that the tax that we pay in, in the UK is, is nothing to do with you know affairs of uh, no. Bermuda or anything else. Um, it's entirely influenced by the way we set up in Europe uh, with one centre in Ireland to serve everybody and the activities that we do in the UK, similar to other countries that aren't Ireland in Europe. Uh, are similarly compensated and, and structured. So the people on the ground are helping people make the most of the web. The people in Ireland are uh, helping to operate the systems and uh, sell advertising to the businesses that want to work with us, and that's how operations are, are set up, and that's personally what I focus on. Mr Britton, you have been really helpful, and I, I appreciate that, but this session was about tax. Yep. <laughs> I think you knew that before you came, so it's slightly odd, again, that we've got a witness who doesn't understand well, tax. Have I you was, got people behind you who do? I was personally requested by name to come to the committee. Well, you that's not by us. Well, we, yeah, but we are, but we didn't ask that particular. You, you asked for me personally, and I actually had to reschedule because I was in oh, Germany, right. so okay. I came can, But can we just get an answer to this question that I think Steve, uh, Stephen asked, which is, whether there are uh, any check, are there any check the box elections yeah. made below Bermuda for IRS purposes? And, and, and sort of for the third time, I don't know what that phrase means. I'm sorry, I'm not a tax expert, and I don't focus on on the US. What I can do is uh, find out and uh, you know share with you afterwards. That's all yeah. I can do. In, in essence, it, it's the revenue that's coming into to Bermuda mm -hmm. and, and how that is being treated as from a okay. tax perspective. I'll happily answer, but I'll have to have somebody else do it for me. Austin Fiona. Um, yeah, I was uh, quite amused actually. The first thing I looked at briefing for this meeting had an ad by Google and the first one was take home 90% of your pay, which turned out to be a complicated tax avoidance scheme for IT contractors, but uh, you've only made money advertising a tax avoidance scheme there. Only if you click. Um, <laughs> um, my real question is, uh, I know that Google, we, we think a lot about search engines, but I know because I've been personally lobbied a few times by Google about them trying to get more into uh, public sector provision of computing. And, uh, and I know that you've already set a toe in the water with, is it uh, Hertfordshire County Council or one of the councils in that area? Um, can you talk us through if, if a public sector organisation in the UK actually contracted with Google for the provision of uh, computing services, how would the revenue be booked and uh, what costs would be booked against it and therefore what tax would be payable? Um, the vast majority of our revenue globally comes from advertising rather than from the kind of computing services that you talked about. So it's in excess of 90% 90, 90 I believe comes from advertising. So but we do have uh, a small but growing business uh, providing things like email and uh, document production and collaboration uh, software. And uh, so that's, that's small um, uh, and it's similar to the Gmail service and, and so on that consumers uh, have. Well, so, in the lobbying, I, I'm told that the whole of Los Angeles and I think the whole of San Francisco run their IT on your platforms and the sales pitch is that uh, they would like um, lots of the UK public sector to do the same thing. So clearly this is a drive for you. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a small but growing business and lo lots of companies and uh, some local authorities are using those services. Well, it's not the entire IT solution, it is well, the Gmail that you're used to as a consumer. What, what, I'm really a business. what I'm really interested in, suppose a public sector organisation contracts with you for a certain amount of revenue, what costs will be put against that revenue before the profit is struck on which tax is payable? Um, that's not a core part of our UK business, um, but well, I is imagine... It a, is the, it a part? I mean, have I been yeah, lobbied by no, some ghosts, or um, is it a part of a UK business or well, not? Uh, it, it's part of what, what our uh, teams in the day, UK would do would be, uh, and it's a relatively small effort, it would be a handful of people in the UK focusing on in, okay, encouraging well, customers I've to I've met that. this handful sure, and I'm asking good. what happens yeah, I'm glad to do see business busy. with them. Um, when you do business with, the, with those guys, <clears> I think the, uh, the revenue, uh, revenue and cost would be similar to the way that the advertising business is structured in the UK. I will confirm if that's incorrect because it's a small part of the business, but uh, the um, innovation 
that drives the economic value of that business comes from our teams in California in the US who are building and developing, in this case, Gmail and other associated products for use by millions of consumers and increasingly millions of businesses. So that would work in a similar way. And our view would be that the economic activity, the innovation, the computer science that drives that is in the US and therefore rightly the majority so, of the profit so and the tax should be in the US. Would it be a good approximation to say that whatever profit is uh, made on that service would it effectively end up in Bermuda and possibly in the US and therefore should the UK public sector factor that in when it's thinking about who, who to do business with, whether it's going to get taxed back or not? Would that be a, a, a thing that we ought to think about? I think the UK public sector benefits from competition, including Google, and can select whatever products and services it wants to use. We think ours are good and they work well and they're chosen by a range of people, but anybody buying software and services should, should make their own choices on these things. But it's, it's, it is the case that uh, the people we have in the UK and the UK limited business we have in the UK pays tax. Uh, and uh, pays all of the tax that it's required to do. And you know, we look at whether that's an appropriate amount based on if we didn't have that business but we had to outsource to third parties, what would we pay? And that's how we arrive at the numbers which we uh, pay the team in the UK. And one last question for me. Um, you're the UK Chief Executive, are you? No, I'm, my job, as I said at the beginning, is uh, Vice President for Operations across uh, Northern Europe. OK, yes, the wetter countries, I remember that. And where are you based? I live in London, but I spend my time around uh, all of those countries. Where are you paid? I'm paid in uh, my bank account in UK. Right. And are you an employee of Google UK or, or what? I think I am because I, because I live here and until a year ago I was running our business in the UK. And do you, uh, do you get any compensation from any other part of the world? Uh, my compensation would come through my payroll and so on, which comes from, in the UK. Comes from here, but it's, I'm paid, my bonus, etc., is an is executive or of Google Incorporated globally, so my compensation is based on the company's overall performance as a, via, as a Via the UK PAY we, system? We paid, yeah, power, power okay. is paid, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Stuart. Uh, Mr. Britton, can I just ask you, if, if you had um, a more orthodox uh, structure between the UK company and Ireland, you had a sort of proper disaggregated business model and you had a different pricing structure to the extent that, I mean, I see the last two years uh, you've actually, on a turnover of £600 million, made losses on both occasions which suggests, in both financial years, which suggests that your pricing structure is wrong at the very least. But if you had to pay tax on profits, uh, would that persuade you to leave the UK? Um, firstly, can I correct what you said? That in the last two years, we we have paid tax because we have earned a uh, an accounting profit. Um, well, in tiny in relation to your turnover. No. And tiny in relation to the UK business. Um, the UK What's business. The UK business? I'll, I'll tell you the numbers again, if I may. In in two thousand eleven, you paid eight million pound in corporation tax. Uh, in six years, on a six thousand million pound turnover in revenues. Uh, in the six years to 2010. That's not exactly pushing the boat out for the taxpayer, well, is it? Uh, I don't quite recognise the, the, the figures you said there. Last year, the, earnings, the revenues in the UK were £396 million. We made an accounting profit of £31 million and we paid tax at 26% on that accounting profit, which is £6 million worth Mr. of tax. Mr. Britton, we're not naive. The revenues of the UK are those that you choose to put through the yeah. UK. What but we're interested in is actually the revenues you earned in the UK. I think you, you look, just, for, just for the avoidance of doubt, the figures I have, and you're, of course, free to challenge them if you wish, uh, loss of £6.1 in 2011 and uh, corporation tax for... Corporation tax purposes a loss of 0.9 million for 2010. Can I, can you just so, ask? So no, those are not those are not the figures I have, and I'm happy to give you a written submission on the then figures. But there is an issue in that we pay tax on accounting profit. We then are required to deduct stock-based compensation. So the statutory number that goes into company's house would be a loss. But actually, we paid tax on 31 million pounds worth of profit, which is six million pounds, and the tax rate is 26 percent. That's on a revenue of 396 million, which, as I've explained. Um, it, we think it's appropriate because that's about the amount we'd have had to pay if we'd gone to third parties and asked them to do the same services. The people in the UK are not doing the innovation, they're not doing the computer science, they're not doing uh, the product development, uh, which well, what is... What are they doing? Uh, the people, as I explained, they're, they're working to help users, consumers, and help businesses get the most out of the internet. 
Um, but the, I think the point here is not about sales. No, come come back to a specific question, if I may, because we can have a we, we can you know meander along. I, I'm parts, trying not to meander. I apologise. Yeah. Can I ask you, were you to adopt a more robust business model where you're actually, uh, God forbid, making a profit? We are making a profit the, and we're paying tax. In the UK, well, a real profit rather than just uh, part of a, a tax avoidance scheme, which this no, clearly I, is. I have to say we are, we are paying the tax we're required to under okay. law and we're right. not avoiding tax. If you, you are if, avoiding tax. Yeah, I think you are avoiding within tax. Life. But one, my question is, would you leave and if you left, if you had to pay a higher rate of tax on a decent profit, which this isn't, uh, where would you go? I think the issue of your understanding here is about, you know, if Google was a British business, if Google had been founded in Cambridge by Larry and Sergey, I think we'd be in a very different place here because, you know, the profitability rightly would sit with where all the technology and innovation happens. But, but Google's not a British business. Google is a US business. The, the activity that happens in the UK, even if you were to describe it as sales activity, which is not exactly what the people do, we could still go and get that activity from the open market at the kind of cost which we're paying to the UK oh, limited business. UK activity end up in the Cayman Islands. But the, in, uh, the, media, the profitability, the media, sorry. regardless of where any profits uh, end yeah, up, that's the, the end business up. in that's the UK. What's so the shareholders in, the, in Google UK uh, can't access that that cash. I mean, how much? It, what's the market capitalization of the company in Bermuda? Do you know? What's, what's it doesn't the have a market cap. It's not a traded company. Google has a market cap, and that's Google Incorporated, which is an American company, as you know. My my point is, the share, if you buy shares in in the UK company, you're not necessarily going to be able to easily access. You can't buy shares in the UK company because it's a wholly owned company. You can buy shares in Google Incorporated, which is an American company. Okay, an American company. Yeah, so if you, you can buy shares in Google Incorporated and um, participate just, as a shareholder. Can, 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 just finish this? Can, can you just finish the answer to the question about where you would go if you, you know, are, is, are you basically saying that if the tax take was higher, that it wouldn't be viable, viable for you to continue to operate in the UK? No. Um, what I'm saying is we pay the tax we're required in every company, in every country in which we operate. Uh, every country, uh, every government, just as you, has the right to set the tax rates you want to set. Every company has to decide how to organise. I hope I've tried to explain to you that we, that the way we're set up reflects how our operations occur. Uh, I can't comment on any hypothetical proposal. Uh, we, we run the business actually in a robust uh, way. We think we do it in a, a, a way that's appropriate. It's certainly uh, legal. We pay all the tax we're required to do. We also have an ob obligation to shareholders, which is to ensure we do that cost effectively. And so we make choices, as, such as I've described it, in order to make okay, those two balances. Let's, go to let's think about the interests of those shareholders. Because I'm interested in what happens to the money which ends up in Bermuda and how the shareholders can get any benefit from that. Because it seems to me that were that money to be transmitted to your shareholders, you would then have to pay tax on it, would you not? Yeah, as I say, I don't, you know, the amount of tax we pay uh, globally is a matter of public record and it's in the billions of dollars. The amount of tax we pay in the UK is a matter of public record and it's uh, six million pounds last year. And, uh, you know, the, You're repeating yourself. You, you, you de what I'm interested well, I, in is you are developing a bank in Bermuda, it seems to me, a cash pile which um, adds to the capital gain in terms of your shareholders, but can't be remitted to your shareholders without them paying further tax on it. I think that's a, that's a matter for uh, our US uh, organisation and the parent company, and that's not something that I'm the party Am to. I right in thinking that your um, tagline is do no evil? Uh, our, it, that, that is a phrase that is uh, used to kind of uh, crystallise the, the sort of values of uh, Google and how we try to operate, correct? <laughs> because it seems to me that you're not, if I can just put it very gently, you're not matching up to that. If you rack up cash in Bermuda, what that does is it means that, I don't know if you, but senior executives of Google will have lovely bonuses which will be based on the surpluses made before tax, and yet your shareholders, who you claim you are trying to protect the interests of by operating in low tax regimes, your shareholders can get no benefit from it. 
Um, I'm not sure I understand fully the question. What I'd say is, firstly, on do no evil, I think we're proud to try to operate to a high standard. You know, we may not always get it right, but I think that um, what that means for us is offering an amazing service that allows you to search a trillion URLs on the web in a second on any device around not the world. Not on tax, helps. Mr Britton. We're well, we here pay, to talk about tax. As I've, as I've said, we pay all the tax required in every country. I understand that. I understand that. But we don't think you pay the tax that is just. What we think you are is cleverer than the taxpayer, than, than the tax men and women around the country. I do, I mean, which is I'd very like good if you're saying we do no evil. We look up, what I am now asking you is... Okay, so you say it is in our interest to reduce our tax liability. That helps our shareholders. I'm trying to get you to answer what your shareholders get out of the money that you remit to Bermuda. It sounds to me like nothing. As I say, I'm not an expert on uh, the way that operates, but what I would say is we're required um, to pay tax on the basis that we, uh, where the economic is carried, economic activity that's carried out, that, that generates profit, and that's, what that's, what, that's the guidance from the HMRC. What the HMRC says is that's not tax avoidance; it's simply the way that corporation tax works. So we follow the way that corporation tax works internationally. I, I, I wish, as I said, that Google was a British business. We would then be having a different conversation. But the oh, activity, exactly. innovation, is in the US, no which is appropriate. Could you perhaps provide the committee with a note? about how your shareholders benefit from the Bermuda holdings. I'm okay, happy to do so if there's a specific but before question. I do, can I just know, do you use other tax havens? Do you use the Channel Isles? Not that I'm aware of, um, but we, you know, we do operate in a lot of countries around the world. Bahamas? Um, what I'll have to do is come back to you and let you know if, if you have a list Cayman of places Isles? you want to check. My understanding is no, but I don't know for certain. Let me come back with a list. If you give me a list, we'll tell you exactly where we operate. Antilles? We have a business in the Netherlands, but not so in the Netherlands Antilles, there. as far as I know. Okay, Meg, then uh, in, uh, Austin, and then we'll move to some general questions. And Fiona McTaggart just touched on it about HMRC. We're here to guard and follow the public pound, the tax pound in the UK. And Google, I mean, I, I have to declare an interest that I had a sandwich and a cup of coffee at Google Campus only last week with the technology uh, or APPG group. Um, hosted there, but Google does a lot of, of work to in help and incubate new technology businesses, and that's really partly where we're driving, that you have a structure that's set up in a way as a modern internet business, quite different to, well, particularly to, to the Starbucks business of selling a physical commodity. And one of our concerns is that when the, 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 our tax authorities are able to pursue the money that is made in our tax jurisdiction in the UK, for the benefit of UK taxpayers. And you're saying you know you wish that Google was a British business, but you are helping to incubate British and international businesses. Do you give them advice about tax affairs? No, we, don't give any, we don't give any businesses any uh, advice on tax affairs, but um, I think it's an important point which you raise. Um, you mentioned campus. We, we invested in a building uh, in the Tech City area of London, seven stories building, which is full of startups. Mm. And, and one of the things our founders are keen to do is, is encourage businesses to take advantage of the internet. And you may, the committee may not be aware of this, but the UK is one of the leading markets in the world in terms of e-commerce and lots of small businesses. I mean, we have 200,000. But money out of us, Mr. But the, yeah. the point is that this is important for UK businesses. One of the big growth opportunities for the UK is it's the important internet economy. For you too. Chair, and we're part chair. of we're part of the way in which those businesses reach consumers around the world. A business in Scotland selling kilts now has 70% of its sales outside Scotland because every time somebody types kilts into Google, they can appear and they only pay when somebody clicks on the ad. So we're very much part of that success story okay. and business, Chair, profit, businesses yeah. are happy to spend their money because it's profitable. Chair, and the figure is dropping, for, for, but, but I learned this interesting fact that 42% of people will only buy something um, off the internet if, it's, if they can read about it in their own language. But that English is still, although it's shrinking in its percentage, it's still a, the dominant language. So Google um, using English, so in, a, in America and the UK, I suppose, as the main English-speaking countries, is helping to drive that. Yeah, well, actually, we invest a lot of, uh, again, and in California. economic activity, you could argue. And this well, is an interesting question about what's economic activity yeah. in the internet world. Where is it yeah. based? Where is the internet based? Absolutely. So you mentioned, you mentioned uh, language, and one of the things we've developed as a free tool for consumers and business is Google Translate. And I'm not sure if people have used this, but it's actually getting quite good. It's a free tool, and it allows a business that is selling to translate its website automatically into multiple other languages, which helps a UK business to export uh, around the world. But I go back to the point about... I mention about Lingo24 just for balance, which is also doing uh, so. The others are available and all these things, it's a free service. Uh, but, I mean, the key point here, as you think about um, the questions you're asking us, is 
where does the economic value come from? It comes from the computer science. Where does the computer science come from? It comes from 17,000 engineers in California who are building these things under the leadership of our team. That's the economic, that's the economic um, success story for Google. I'm proud to say we're supporting thousands of startups now in the UK uh, through our uh, activity in, in Tech City, but also through the fact that our paid advertising works in a way that no kind of advertising has worked yeah. in the past to yeah. help reach we're, consumers around the world. We're short of time, so I'm going to okay. Austin, have a quick go, and then we're going to go to some general questions for everybody. I'd like to be quick, I'd like a long go. <laughs> um, I am in the, well, I'm surprised that you're going to opt for the softest tax regime possible. Uh, our uh, endeavour is to ensure that profits generated here are taxed here. I mean, and they are. A couple of years back, I was told by ITV that Google now had a bigger advertising revenue than ITV. Uh, and yet, uh, I don't know if that's still the case, but it's a fairly telling statistic. Uh, it wasn't paying the, t the taxes that ITV, its competitor for advertising yeah. revenue, that's a, good, that's, a really good, that's a really good question, uh, Mr. Mitchell, in the sense that you know, ITV is a commercial broadcaster which generates all of its activity in the UK and was granted a licence by the state for the spectrum it has. And produces programmes here. And produces programmes in the UK. And, and Google is a business that was built in America and continues to be an American business. And all of the activity that develops our technology is led from, and the vast majority of the engineering is done in America. So that, that's absolutely the contrast. As I say, if Google was a British business, you'd be looking at the profits being generated here. Google's an American business and the profits are generated I accept as that, the HMRC course, advises and international tax law, tax law dictates. I accept so we that, don't of have course. an opportunity would, to do anything else. I would else. want profits generated here by any business, whether it's multinational yeah, Of course, American and we pay tax on the profits we make to here. Be, to be making a contribution to the revenue. And what we're trying to find out is where the money goes. Now, it goes to Ireland, it goes to Dublin. Uh, but does it then, I couldn't make out from uh, our chairs somewhat incredible drawings, and you couldn't see them. I can't see I couldn't them. understand them, so we've got something in common to start with. Uh, yes. Does it then go to the Netherlands, which has got lots of double tax agreements? Yeah. So, um, uh, any, any money that's spent by an advertiser in Europe... So it's not paying much tax in Ireland, either. Well, the tax rate in Ireland, I think, is 12.5%. There was an arrangement in the past, which I understand is no longer necessary, where there was a, uh, a, 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 an arrangement via Google Netherlands. I understand that's no longer necessary. So, think of the money being spent with Google Ireland. Uh, it, that money will go to pay some of the costs in Ireland. So, uh, we've uh, just actually opened a second data centre in it's Ireland. it's not paying much tax, even if... Uh, well, it's paying less tax. Is low. Yeah. The corporation tax is just passing through. Correct. Your corporation tax rate in Ireland is lower than it is in the UK, as I oh, say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's still not paying much of it. Well, uh, the rate we're paying is 12.5%, and the business is continuing to grow, so I expect over time we'll make a bigger contribution, assuming we can be successful. Anyway, what, what, can't, what can't be fiddled through is pay 12.5%, but, some, but most of it doesn't pay 12.5%. It then goes on to, to the Netherlands, and then it goes to Bermuda. Now, the interesting question is uh, what that does for the shareholders, because as Fiona uh, said, uh, doesn't benefit them. They can't get their hands on it because it would have to pay 30% 30 ta 30 tax uh, to be repatriated to America, to the shareholders, yeah. right? Well, it's so it sits there in a yeah. cash mountain. It makes no contribution to all the research and development and new uh, te technologies that you've been telling us about that's carried on in California, it just sits there. I mean, it's probably lovely to visit it uh, and, you know, walk around it and look at it and think, ah, but, but what contribution does it actually make? I, uh, I, it's a matter for the board of Google, uh, but I imagine if the resources are needed to, to be used, they can be used. I mean, uh, shareholders... Well, it couldn't be used in America because you'd have to pay 30% tax. If they could be used in America if that were the case. I mean, shareholders uh, uh, will benefit from the profits after tax that the company generates. And so, you know, the company has choices about where it locates uh, money over time. I think, in my understanding... If, if Robbie you know, got in, you'd be able to repatriate it to America, but he didn't get in, so he can't go back there. I, there's no question there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point out, I mean, it's a good argument about economic activity based in California. Um, but you keep on referring to the fact that the income is actually generated from advertising. That's, That's not correct. Californian advertising, is it? Well, so it's, the, the, so the, it's the, a slightly the, misleading argument. The, I mean, I mean, well, I understand it, but to just keep on saying it's all about, and I, you know, of course, part of it's generated by the technology. That's the medium. It's also 
generated by, local, by, by advertisement sales which are specific to territories. So yes. a significant part of the economic activity is specific to the territory, not all just global. That wouldn't be fair. Would so it? I think you're, you're raising a fair point, and I want to be very clear on this. The economic activity that we carry out in the UK uh, is paid for at what we believe is an appropriate rate because we look at what we would have to pay if we went outside Google to get it. The advertising load, just to be clear, it's not the same as buying a double page spread in the Sunday Times. No, I right? It's a much more complicated algorithmically driven system that's almost as complicated as the system of search itself because anybody can target any keyword anywhere in the world, any phrase that's typed uh, across multiple domains of Google and they can uh, change their bids, the amount of uh, text they say, uh, which set so it's very, very we all, we, all use, we all use it. Okay, but it, it's very complicated compared with what you would traditionally view as advertising, and that's why we believe it's appropriate that the technology that underpins the advertising, just like the technology that underpins search, is uh, driven by engineers out of the US, where we have, as I say, 17,000 engineers. Right. Okay, Richard. <laughs> I know. Richard. You say you've got £396 million of UK revenues. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. Um, I'm trying to understand what the costs are of generating those revenues. Those revenues are people paying for advertising, is that right? No, the, the business in the UK is people providing services to Google Island, which is what I mentioned earlier, and uh, they uh, help consumers and uh, enterprises make the most of the web, encourage them to understand it, they run lots of sort of education on the business side, and, and uh, training, uh, show them the kind of products that are available to so you. The 396 million pounds of revenue is paid by Google Island. Comes from Google Island. That's all correct. of it? Yes. All of it? Yes. For in, in return for the provision of services? Yes, and as I say, we, we determined that we think that's an appropriate amount based on looking at what we'd have to pay to get similar people to do it in the uh, uh, in the market. So, for example... Actually, what you said was it determined on, on what it would cost if you went and bought the services from... Yeah, uh, so a consultancy company. firm or something yeah. like that would be... Well, of course, if you, if you have people in-house, they will generally be a lot cheaper than going out and buying it from a firm. Well, the, the, the reason we do it in-house is because we think this is all extremely new stuff and therefore the people in-house can understand in more detail the products that we have. But it's a, it's a call. We could, we could certainly hire a consulting firm or similar to do some of the things which our people do. And so that's how we try to judge that it's a fair amount. Yeah. It, just, it just strikes me as odd that the costs of generating this £396 million of revenue would be uh, quite as high as they sound as if they are. So that you... Well, no, that, that, that's £396 uh, is the revenue earned by the UK operation, paid for by Ireland, and it's based on the cost of all the activity which we do here, plus a margin in order to reflect what right. we pay in the open market. Right, and, and you're selling those services to Google Ireland, which is paying you for them. Correct. Yes? Right. Well, you said you had 1,300 employees yeah. in the UK. If you paid them £120,000 each, then that would cost um, £156 million. Mm -hmm. Now, it's still leaving £240 million of other activity that Google Island would have to be paying for. Mm -hmm. I, I find it difficult to understand what Google Island is paying for that it's getting value for. I don't know if you are paying everyone £120,000 a year, but it just sounds, sounds very... We, uh, there are a bunch of other costs in there, including the cost of real estate. Our people are in two very big offices in central London and so on. So I'm pretty confident that those are the costs uh, that we pay out because we would want to make sensible so choices. What, sorry, what are the costs? No, the, um, uh, the people and the real estate costs and the, uh, you know, the other costs of uh, having an operation of that I'm, size. In I'm the sorry, you, you said you're pretty confident that those are the costs. I'm asking the, Well, the 396, you've done, the costs? you've done a back of an envelope thing. I can share with you the accounts which yes. are um, published and audited every year. Yes. And the amount of uh, revenue has gone up as the business has, has grown. Um, the revenue line, I think, is double what it was three years ago, to right. give you an indication. Uh, the revenue line from Google Island. Uh, the the revenue of Google UK Limited, yes. The revenue of Google line. Island paid from, sorry, the revenue of Google UK Limited paid from Google Island Correct. has tripled in the last, in the last uh, uh, just more than doubled in the last three, last years. three years. So Google Island is paying you a lot more for a lot more. Yeah, services. but don't forget, our business is growing uh, pretty fast in the scheme yeah. of things as an internet business, and it's pretty popular. Well, if you were able to send the committee a note with uh, what those costs are. I'd be very grateful. Certainly I can provide you a, a detail uh, on that. Okay. One more question from Steve and then we can move on to a few general uh, questions. Could I draw all of you? royalties you pay in Ireland, whether that's to the Netherlands or to Muda? The question was what I'm struggling to What royalties do you pay from Ireland? Um, 
I don't have a, a, a number on royalties. I don't think we have anything we would describe as, as royalties. The revenue earned by Ireland uh, will have a bunch of costs against it, including the 3,000 plus people, uh, the property, the data centres and so on, and then, yes, some costs associated with um, uh, the international businesses we've talked about earlier. So you don't pay any royalties from it? I, I don't know I would describe it as, as royalties, but again, what I can do is provide you, I, I think I promise to provide you with more of a breakdown well, on Perhaps you just, could just clarify, because looking at the SEC filings for Google, it said the total amount of foreign income before tax was 7633 million uh, US. The foreign tax charge for the year, including deferred tax, was 248 million, which is equivalent to 3.25%. Of revenue? Um, Yes, uh, 248, which is equivalent to a tax rate of 3.25 per cent. Of That's revenue? Just, yeah. Yeah, well, tax is paid on profits, obviously. So, the, yeah, no, on the income. Income oh, before tax. Point. I'm sorry, so I was struggling to hear The total amount of foreign income before tax was 7,633 million US. And yet, the tax charge for the year, including deferred tax, was 248 million which is equivalent to 3.25 per cent, and that's in your Google's SEC filings. And I'll I was just I trying to take to that as read. What I can tell you is uh, how you got in to 20, that Well, in 2011, we paid uh, 1.5 billion dollars of uh, corporation tax in the US, which is an effective rate. So this of is on foreign income. This is on foreign income. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm, I'm just confirming back the. No, what US you paid number. in the US on your US income. Right. This is about foreign income. Uh, I don't have the figures to hand, but again, I'm very happy to you know, answer any specific it's questions you have. It's your big of the world, actually, Mr Britton. That's the big you're responsible for. I'm responsible for Northern Europe, which is a part of the international, but not sure. by any means all of the The money from which is ending up in Bermuda. And what we're trying to establish is, in your SEC filings, you yourself yeah. said this is a US company. In yes. your SEC filings, as I understand it, you're, there's SEC rules or there's IFS rules about passive income. And so one of the ways around that is to check the box to say, this isn't money coming back into the US. Mm -hmm. It's going in to be parked, possibly, in Bermuda. Yeah. And you're telling the US authorities that actually the foreign tax charge for the year is just 248 million. So US authorities, the, the question in my mind yeah. is to what extent, in essence, are you depriving the US taxpayer? Because oh. you're saying to the US taxpayer, actually, there's only 248 million pounds yeah. of taxable income here which works out at 3.25%. So the implication is that a lot of the profit is being stripped out somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what's unclear to me at, at the end of today's session is where, well, is it being stripped out? <laughs> uh, and if so, where is that happening? Is it happening in Ireland through royalty payments mm -hmm. elsewhere, which it was a discussion we had earlier around the 6%, the 4.7%. Rates is it going into the Netherlands or is it being parked in Bermuda? And the implication of your SEC filings are that a very low tax rate in terms of the US is being paid on your foreign income. Yeah. We've established today that you're not paying tax on the income from the UK. So it's very unclear as to where the tax is being paid in the chain. We are paying tax tax on our UK limited business, as I've mentioned a number of times. Negligible. Uh, we're paying corporation tax based on the activity that is carried out here. Based on the activity you and choose to it's file in Britain. It's the activity you, you choose to file. But That's I think the, the distinction, distinction here between what we've been talking about and what we've been discussing earlier with consumer sales businesses is the technology is US technology. Now, to come on to your SEC, question, SEC, let me come on to that. Yes. I'd like you to but I was just, I was just correcting again to. the fact that we pay corporation tax in the UK as we're required to do. In the US, I haven't got the figures, but if, if you're quoting from the SEC filings, of course they're uh, correct. I'm sure it's the case that uh, we pay more tax on the US uh, earned revenues than we do on the revenues in the rest of the world. And um, I can answer the questions as I promised to do that you uh, raised earlier on that. Um, what I'd say is, um, as an international business that's a US owned business, uh, we make choices about where we locate and how we set up our structure in order to ensure we can operate successfully and uh, to minimise um, the costs and do the efficient uh, things to run our business. That's what we're required to do uh, by shareholders and, and by law, and that's what we do, play by the rules and manage our business efficiently. Okay, let's go on to some general questions. Um, do you, all of you, accept that alongside your duties to your shareholders, which Mr Britton has just alluded to, you have obligations to the societies in which you operate? 
and which, from which you derive a much huge benefits, and that those obligations include paying tax? Yes, 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 very much so. And do you accept the principle that profits should be taxed in the countries in which they're made and where genuine economic activity is concerned? Very much so. Yes. <coughs> Profits should be taxed in the, in the countries where the economic activity takes place that drives those profits. So in our case, where but the innovation don't. takes place. <laughs> um, our business is made in but California. You <laughs> this That's is the really fact <laughs> but we're, not, we're not making cups of coffee, we're accept, making If research. you accept that, why on earth are you all? I think we've been through you know, coffee that we know we drink in the UK, to books that I know I get in the UK, to Google ads that I know are just UK search engine specific. Why on earth do you manipulate your accounts uh, so that you get away with not paying corporation tax, which is what this afternoon is about, in the UK? Mr. Elster. Respectfully, I would disagree with that characterization. Chair, we do not manipulate ever anything anywhere. We oh, work Mr. very hard Elster, to be very honest. You can't say that. It is very true. You, you can't say that you don't manipulate the, lo the royalty charge. In your case, it's the royalty charge. It's the manipulation of the charges for loans that you make in the UK, wholly owned subsidiaries take out, and the price of coffee, which uh, you, you, know, you charge 20%, whatever the price is for. That's manipulation. It takes money out of the UK, which would otherwise be viewed as profit and would be taxed through corporation tax. It's manipulation. Respectfully, those jurisdictions require us to report profit where the activity happens. We have no choice. No, but it to do isn't that. where the activity happens. You choose to charge 20%. For, you choose to take 20% for your Swiss coffee. You choose to do the 60% royalty, and you actually told us that uh, uh, it's what you could get away with. There wasn't a basis for it. And you choose to charge above market rates for borrowing. You choose that. No, I completely disagree with that characterization, Chair, respectfully. That is not at all how we approach it. All of those rates that you've just referred to have been heavily scrutinized by valuation experts, by independent third parties who fully agree with those rates, that they're appropriate and fair, by the taxing authorities all around the world. We absolutely do nothing, nothing to avoid taxes. Mr. Cecil, and then I'll come to you, Ian. We, we set up our business across Europe for the benefit of tens of, our tens of millions of customers and sellers uh, across Europe. We, we pay all applicable taxes in all jurisdictions. We operate compliant with the tax law in the UK. Uh, you, we've had a discussion this afternoon about Bermuda, and let me just uh, reiterate the fact that the tax we pay in the UK has nothing to do with anything outside uh, you know, of, of, of Europe. and. Uh, so what we do in the UK, we love the UK, it's a successful country from e-commerce, we think we've been a part we of that. We think we should put a bit more money back But in. we follow the rules that HMRC lays out when they say uh, uh, that we should be taxed on the activity where we generate our profits. For us, that is all of the engineering work that's done in California. As I said, I wish we'd invented Google in, the, in Cambridge, ideally, uh, but we didn't. It's an American business, and the engineering activity Can continues to be led from there. Can I just have a feel? How many sets of accounts have yet to be agreed with? I, I will come to you in a, minute, in a minute. How many sets of accounts have yet to be agreed in uh, uh, your business, Mr. Alstead? In the UK. In the UK. The years 2010 forward are under review. You've agreed everything before that? Yes. And Mr. Cecil, how many sets of accounts have yet to be agreed? As I said, we're, we're regularly audited uh, by... How many sets of accounts have I, I yet to be agreed with HMRC? I, I, I don't have that, that specific <laughs> figure. I will come back to you with it. How many sets of accounts have yet to be agreed? Our accounts are with Companies House for 2011 and we're They're not Companies House, with HMRC, the tax basis? Will be available to HMRC as well. The, the year's closed to 2011, and I don't think there are any outstanding issues, but if there are, we'll let you know. Um, HMRC haven't told me that there are. Okay, yeah. Can, can I ask another general question, which is <coughs> do, do any of you have any discussions internally about um, issues like consumer power and the value of your brand and how that could be influenced by? the ethical behaviour or perceptions of your company and how do you factor it, that into the sort of discussion we've had this afternoon? 
Yeah, I mean, no, everybody who uses any Google service is a choice. Uh, all of our services are free to consumers, and so we work extremely hard to try to make sure those services work well and that the consumers feel a level of trust with us. We talked earlier about the statement, don't be evil, and I think for us that means when we give you web search results, we try to give you the best and most neutral results that we can do. So that's how we operate. And if consumers didn't like what they were doing, they would, they would go elsewhere. There's plenty of choice. If you want to buy something, you can go to Amazon. If you want to get a job, you can go to Monster. If you want to get the news, you can go to the BBC. So I think that, that definitely is very much at the forefront of our minds every day. Before the others answer, my, my question is, is not just about right now, it's about the trend that seems to be occurring. I'm sure we've got some representatives at the back of the room of people who are now starting to say, well, don't deal with this company because they don't behave ethically. And that could be to do with paying taxes. It, it could be. I mean, I think... You know, one of the great benefits of the internet is it's brought an awful lot of transparency and an ability for consumers themselves to publish information and to be heard. And I think that's a good thing. And we very much support freedom of speech on the web. We want to hold ourselves to a high standards. I hope I've tried to explain as transparently as possible this afternoon how we operate. We'll happily answer any follow-up questions you have. But absolutely, our business is completely built on trust of consumers. They won't come to us if they don't um, like the service. Okay.